The group that has attracted the most attention to the cause of independence is the nationalists. Their tactics have been dramatic and often violent. Two of the most famous attempts to bring world attention to Puerto Rico's status took place in the 1950s. The first, an armed attack against President Truman at Blair House. The second, on March 1, 1954, in the U.S. Congress, when nationalist Lolita Lebron led three men into the House of Representatives, firing their guns and shouting, Puerto Rico is not free. In Washington, D.C., ruthless, fanatic violence erupted in the halls of Congress. Three men and a woman opened fire from the visitor's gallery of the House of Representatives. Five congressmen were hit. Estimates of the numbers of shots fired range from 15 to 30, and each bullet hole found is a grim reminder to those who were present of the terrible surprise attack. The gang was held at police headquarters as a widespread search was launched for others who shared in the plot. To Irving Forrest, Raphael Miranda, Mrs. Lolita Lebron, Andre Cordero, the gun wielders, and to their accomplices goes the evil distinction of having perpetrated a criminal outrage almost unique in America's history. Wanton violence that shocked and stirred the nation and did only harm to the cause of the Puerto Rican people. This type of extreme radical activity is not well thought of or accepted in a stability of an American form of government, a democratic form of government. That's probably the worst type of activity if you wish to have your cause heard and decided positively. Congressman Paul Konjorski and Bill Emerson were pages in the House of Representatives the day of the Nationalists' attack in 1954. But when I looked up, uh, I could see people with uh, firing guns and uh, a woman trying to unfurl a flag. Uh, that was Lolita Lebron. She was sort of the, uh, the mastermind of the whole thing. The element of which uh, Lolita Lebron was a part uh, was a small element uh, in Puerto Rico. As a matter of fact, the group itself never outnumbered uh, 500 people. I, I look back on it as, uh, as an incident in our history, uh, uh, but not one really of uh, profound significance. In 1952, Puerto Rico had become a commonwealth of the United States. The next year, the U.S. asked the United Nations to change the definition of Puerto Rico's status from colony to freely associated state. The UN complied. But the nationalists believed Puerto Rico was still a colony. They felt the only way to make the world aware of their objection was to make a dramatic statement directly to the American government. I mean, I always say that there are two forces that move uh, men. One is religion and another is the love for their country. And in this case, uh, Lolita and the others thought that uh, Puerto Rico was uh, being oppressed and that they, they wanted, I don't think they were wanted to do harm uh, to people, they just wanted to call the attention because sometimes you get desperate when you have a message which you think is the correct one and nobody cares about it. On the day of the attack, Rafael Cancel Miranda was 24 years old. We are willing to do what it takes to be a free country. We are not violent people, but the enemy is violent. And they use violence against our people. So uh, if we have to use violence against the enemy, we use it. In Puerto Rico, we have met ourselves in this, in this kind of divide, in this strong sense of no matter the, the economic benefits that have been achieved, no matter the political uh, examples that we can set, here are people who have reached deep down in their own history and saying, look, we're just expressing what you expressed in 1776. 